tutorial shows how to use the Enterprise Process Manager tool to import a pre-configured procure to pay template to build a process model. Use the Enterprise Process Modeler tool to visualize and interact with the process model and how to use the snapshot feature to save point-in-time data for a process model. For this scenario, acting as a business analyst or power user, we will create a procure-to-pay process model using a pre-configured template. Acting as a process owner, we will interact with the procure-to-pay process model to analyze the data and look for opportunities for improvement. First, let's create a process model from a process model template. A process model template contains many pre-configured components. For example, a mapping to the Enterprise 1 tables from which data will be read and the metrics and KPIs for the process. You can create one or more process models from the same template. Let's sign in to the Enterprise 1 web client and click Processes from the User ID drop-down list. Here, let's select the procure to pay template. Process models are based on tracking the flow of a document through its statuses. This input lets you choose what order type to track. OP here indicates purchase orders. Process models further track the line type for orders. S indicates stock items. Enterprise Process Manager creates the process model from data in the order activity rules for purchase orders. This field indicates the status at which the process starts. Let's accept these default values. As we can see here, Enterprise Process Manager reads data from the Enterprise 1 tables and generates a process model. Let's save this process model. While we are in the Enterprise Process Manager tool, there are certain decisions, filter settings and configurations we can make that all users of the process model will see when they interact with the process model. We will explore these in the next steps. The most significant design task we can accomplish is to rearrange the nodes in the process model. Enterprise Process Manager does its best to lay out the process model's nodes and links. However, we may prefer a different layout for our users. Let's click a node in the process model and drag it to a different position on the canvas. As we drag the node, we can notice that the grid appears to aid us with alignment. We can enable or disable these options. Let's continue dragging nodes until we design a layout we like and then save the process model. Now, let's review the design option. After we have configured the process model to be based on an order type and line type, we cannot change it. We can only review these entries. The Data Filtering and Grouping Options panel displays the data filtering and grouping settings that were established when the template was created. We cannot change the settings here. We will modify the filter criteria later in this tutorial. Let's click the Procure to Pay icon. Here we can see the process properties, process metrics, nodes metrics and links metrics tab. We can only view these configurations from the template and discover information about the process, node and link metrics. Now let's preview this process model. This window displays a preview of the process model as a user would see it with actual values displayed for process, node, and link metrics. Notice that the metrics for all nodes and links are zero and no charts are shown in the right-hand panel. That is because there is no data that matches the current filter criteria. We will change that in the next step. Now let's see the filter options. Although the pre-configured template dictates the source of data for the process model, these filter options enable us to choose how the data for metrics and KPIs is filtered. In the order date row, let's change the date. While the template was pre-configured to select purchase orders created from January 1st, 2024, essentially we are telling Enterprise Process Modeler to widen the selection of data to include all purchase orders from January 1st, 2000 until today. This change will be propagated to the process model that the users will use and we will see it in the later part of this tutorial. Now, let's click Refresh and Close. Notice that the metrics for all nodes and links now have values and the KPI charts appear in the right-hand panel. Let's expand the node and link metrics. Similar to one view watch lists, the metrics that are shown on the nodes and links can change colors based on threshold values. The node metrics and link metrics rows enable us to configure the thresholds. 
The first number indicates the threshold above which a value will be considered a warning and change color to orange. The second number indicates the threshold above which a value will be considered critical and change color to red. You can set the thresholds to ascending or descending using these up or down arrows. In the link matrix drop down list, we can configure the numbers within the badges on the links to represent different values. For this procure to pay template, we can select amount open, quantity open or order value. Similarly, we can change the values that are shown on the node matrix. The show display options panel provides us several settings to configure how the process model will look to the users. If we change the settings here, users can override them to their preferences when they interact with the process model. The data that the template is ingesting from the enterprise one tables could have many dimensions. For example, it might be ingesting data from many companies, many business units and almost certainly a date range. The analytics options enable us to change the dimensions of how this data is viewed. If we change the settings here, users can override them to their preferences when they interact with the process model. Let's save the process model. We have now created a process model that the users can interact with to analyze the procure to pay process. In the previous exercise, we took on the role of a business analyst to create a process model from a pre-configured template. In this next exercise, we will take on the role of a user, likely a business process owner or a process improvement specialist to interact with the process model and analyze the procure to pay process based on actual data from the enterprise one tables. Let's access the enterprise process window. Now, we will take a tour through the enterprise process modeler user interface and discover ways to visualize and analyze the process model and metrics. The most obvious and fundamental part of the enterprise process model is the model pane, which depicts the process model as a set of nodes connected by links. Notice that both nodes and links have associated metrics. We can hover over both nodes and links to see more details about the metrics. We can drag nodes to new positions. However, in the enterprise process modeler, the node positions are temporary. When we close and reopen the process model, the nodes will revert to the positions as we defined them when we first created the process model. We can use these icons to align the nodes. Let's study the process model. Does the process flow make sense? What node metrics stand out? Are there any metrics high, low, or are there any surprises in the link metrics? Next, notice the nodes metrics and links metrics fields. These fields enable us to choose which metrics to show on the model pane. These choices are pre-configured in the process model template and we cannot change them, but we can choose which to view. Let's select different metrics and notice how the model pane changes. Let's analyze the process model and understand how changing a node or link metric affect how we view the data and which metrics is most critical for improving the business process. Now let us click these arrow icons next to the node and link metrics fields. These options enable us to set thresholds for the colors of the nodes and links. Metrics that are less than the first value will show in blue. Metrics that are between the two values will show in orange and the metrics that are greater than the second value will show in red. We can also click the up and down arrow icons to choose whether the thresholds are ascending or descending. Now, let's open the show display options. Here, we can make choices about how model and metrics appear. For example, let's disable and enable the show zero links option and see how it affects the process model. Next, let's open the analytics options. The data coming from the Enterprise One system has multiple dimensions. These dimensions are pre-configured in the process model template. For example, we can select order date and this dimension enables us to see the metrics within a time period grouped by year, quarter, month or day. We can use the arrows to step through the time periods. Notice how the metrics on the model and the charts in the right pane change.
Let's analyze the process model. How does changing the metrics shown on the nodes and links affect our interpretation of the data? What additional data is revealed when we choose a different analytic option? What does stepping through the data year by year reveal? What do we learn when we change the analytics option to view by business unit and step through each business unit? The filter options pane here provides a set of options to filter the data. These are defined in the process model template and we cannot change them, but we can choose the operators and values for how the data is filtered. For example, in the order date row, let's change the dates. Notice how the metrics on the model and the charts in the right pane change. The metrics we see now include only purchase orders created between January 1st, 2023 and today. We can continue experimenting with the filter options, clicking refresh after each change. When we are finished, let's click refresh and close. Next, let's turn our attention to the context analytics pane. The enterprise process modeler enables us to analyze our process in three contexts, which are represented by the three tabs. These analytic charts show key performance indicators for our process. These charts are pre-configured in the process model template and we cannot change them, but we can change certain aspects of how we view them. For example, notice the first KPI chart in this procure to pay process model and it is titled Spend Analysis by Business Unit. To get a better view of this chart, let's click Maximize. We can choose the configuration options here. Let's experiment with the options and notice how the chart changes. To focus on analytics related to a specific node, click a node on the process model. Notice that the three charts in the context analytics pane change to show analytics about that node. Like the previous charts, we can expand the view and change the configuration options. Similarly, to see the analytics for the link context, click a link on the process model. To change the context back to the process level, Click the process level icon at the top of the model pane. Let's analyze the process model. What information do we get from the context analytics charts that we did not get from the metric badges on the nodes and links? How does drilling into data reveal additional insights? What do we learn by changing the view of the data to the process, node and link contexts? The Enterprise Process Modeler allows us to capture and save a snapshot of the current runtime enterprise process data, enabling us to review it later. In this exercise, let's analyze the performance of business units between calendar years 2023 and 2024. Let's click the Show Filter options and set the order date between January 1st, 2023 and December 31st, 2023. From Show Analytics, let's select Business Unit. Now, let's save the snapshot with the name as 2023 by Business Unit. We now have a snapshot of the data for calendar year 2023 with a view by Business Units. Notice that the Enterprise Process Modeler saves the timestamp at which we created the snapshot. The data for the snapshot is now static. Let's follow the same procedure to create a snapshot for 2024. Depending on the source of our demo data, there may not be any transactions for the year 2024 and the metrics all show zero values. That's okay, we can still save a snapshot of the process model. To view each snapshot, we can enable the snapshot option and select the snapshot we want to view from the drop-down list. For more information, see the JD Edwards Enterprise One Tools Enterprise Process Modeler Guide and visit us online at learnjd.com. Thanks for watching.